Welcome to Zcast, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval, Principal Analyst, ZK Research, and I'm returning again for another one of my thought leadership videos. Uh, before I get started, though, a quick shout out to eWeek, my media partner. All Zcasts are done in conjunction with the eWeek Eats program. Uh, today, I'm joined by uh, a returning guest, uh, Ozer. I can never pronounce your last name, Ozer, so I'll say Ozer D, VP of Marketing for Solana. Ozer, why don't you say hi to everybody and int- introduce yourself and uh, uh, tell us how you've been doing. Absolutely, Ziz. Thanks again for having me. Uh, Ozer Dondurmajolu, everyone. Um, a Turkish last name for you there. Great to be back. Uh, we've been busy here at Salona for the last three years, working on a private 5G solution, which we carefully uh, monikered to, say, 5G LAN solutions for the enterprise. Uh, look forward to sharing some updates about what we're doing and kind of review some of the very latest uh, market news. But great to be back. I've uh, been with the company for the last three years. My background is Wi-Fi. I've spent 14 plus years at Aruba Networks working on different wireless technology solutions, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So great to be talking about 5G again on the show. Yeah. Well, it's always good to talk about 5G. Everybody loves 5G. Uh, it's one better than 4G, so we know that. Um, and you guys have had some good momentum, right? Uh, I, in fact, I did a recent Zcast with somebody from NTT. Uh, they're uh, reselling your product now. Aruba is as well. So, uh, and uh, so you guys have had some really good partnerships here. So, so congratulations on that. Now, one of the interesting announcements came um, uh, earlier uh, this week that Cisco, you know, the 800 pound gorilla networking, announced its own private 5G offering. And so, what do you think that means for the market? Yeah, I think um, one, there's going to be quite a bit of options for the customers. If we look at just last year, what happened? Uh, We, of course, brought our 5G LAN solution to market. We've been able to achieve significant growth in different industries, primarily warehousing, logistics, industry, supply chain verticals. And we've seen AWS come into play. Um, We've seen us partnering with NTT P5G team, as you highlighted. And then shortly afterwards, Cisco comes into play. And, you know, everybody has their own unique approaches as they go after the market, but it shows that we were not crazy to start Salona. And there were real use cases and real customer um, value that we can create. And this is just another validation that somebody like Cisco, who has the ears of... um, uh, many customers out there and who's in touch with many enterprise environments out there is also hearing what we're hearing, which is enterprise can in fact t- take advantage of 5G, can in fact make it um, accessible within their own environment. Uh, they can take advantage of the growing 5G device and application ecosystem and uh, create an express lane of communication for wireless in their own environment for their critical critical infrastructure, that um, message is clear in Cisco's announcements, just like it was in AWS's announcement a couple of months ago. And uh, those are the type of use cases that we've been lucky to support many of our customers. And um, another validation, um, we always welcome Cisco to, to the things that we do because they not only validate the market, but they also um, usually through educated uh, means they pick the best areas to invest in, in terms of customers the use cases to tackle. So, um, and their announcement points to some of the things that I highlighted uh, moments ago. So, great news for the market overall, in my opinion. Yeah. So, the, one of the interesting uh, things about their announcement, though, was, was they tied it to also a Wi-Fi launch, right? So, um, they had they they did talk about customers not having to choose between Wi-Fi and private 5G. So where do you, where do you see um, the similarities between private 5G and Wi-Fi and what are the differences? Where, where would a customer use each? Yeah, I think the analogy with Wi-Fi starts with, hey, what is the other technology, wireless technology we use in an enterprise setting? And that is Wi-Fi. There's a and way it's that- it's cheap and it's ubiquitous, right? Like we all have it and it's cheap. We all have it. And we're all yeah. used to using it. We all wake up. Turn, off, turn on our phones, we connect to a cellular network, public cellular network. 
And then shortly after that, we connect to a Wi-Fi network. Many of our devices at home and at work stay on the Wi-Fi network for 24-7. So it's kind of like oxygen at this point. And there's a method to madness in consuming that technology. Um, you need to have talented managed service provider partners or engineers in-house uh, design the network based on square footage, based on coverage, capacity requirements. You want to work with vendors who can support you 24-7, quickly address any issues that might come up, um, roll out new buildings, new floors in a matter of hours instead of days and days. Uh, you want to be able to learn about new features, new capabilities by just reading uh, community posts online or asking questions to your colleagues or just going through certification classes. Uh, there's a way to learn enterprise networking technologies. And Cisco, you know, a long time ago, they were at the forefront of um, how that enablement and community building could be done. And uh, many enterprise networking vendors that came after Cisco took the same uh, model. We advocated that the same model of adoption, learning, adoption, getting certified, deploying something, um, trying a technology and rolling it out on large scale could be done using that same methodology. And we were kind of alone for a while because a lot of people thought, hey, this is 5G, it must be complex. It cannot be made that accessible to the enterprise. And, um, you know, I think Cisco's announcement says, no, 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 we're going to follow the same playbook. We're going to make this as easy as accessible. And uh, guess what? Uh, Solana has also been doing that for the last three years. Um, so if you combine Wi-Fi and 5G together, what ends up happening is the same network engineer or the same MSP partner who is planning your building rollout for wireless technology, now they have two options. Hey, I, I have my BYOD devices and my guest users at a, let's say at a hospital, um, I'm going to support with Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E. And on the other end, maybe we have some uh, automated mobile robots and video surveillance cameras, maybe patient bedside technologies that we would rather not spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on wires. Why don't we put that stuff on a 5G spectrum, 5G private spectrum? And those two things can live side by side. And again, deployed and managed by that same exact team of whoever is supporting the existing Wi-Fi installation. That has been our motto just to accelerate that adoption cycle. And I think that's the approach that Cisco taken here. I don't think that we're seeing a direct product integration like a single radio or single management plane, but we're seeing a methodology of onboarding the technology to an enterprise facility in pretty much the same way that you would do uh, Cisco Wi-Fi, it sounds like, at least on paper. I would think it'd be hard to build a product that had a single radio for all those different technologies. Yeah. Now, yeah. now Wi-Fi itself is going through its own evolutionary process, right? So there's this thing out there called 6E uh, yep. versus Wi-Fi 6. And I know there's some um, 6Es, you know, it's a different spectrum. So it's a lot cleaner. You're not fighting all, all those 2.4 devices and things. Is 6E um, a substitute for private 5G or do you see those two things being uh, distinct as well? They're still distinct, two separate spectrums. Um, I think the majority of difference is if you want to take advantage of Wi-Fi 6E, you need 6E devices and you need to open up the spectrum to be able to use that 6E devices. Um, but the channel access, the, able to, you know, the ability to schedule traffic between clients and radios, uh, very much similar to the past generation of technologies. On 5G, um, the traditional way of uh, access to a wireless medium continues, which is scheduled by the infrastructure, mobility events, device wake up, uh, when the devices are going to transmit. They're all very infrastructure dependent, very infrastructure controlled. Um, so you expect a little bit more control over the quality of service. With 5G, you can assign a latency promise or a throughput, a packet error rate promise, let's say to a robotics infrastructure, that might be quite critical. And honestly, um, given the fact that you have to reserve a portion of the spectrum through the local regulation, for example, in the United States done by FCC, and other countries have different way of regulating that spectrum access for 5G, that centralized coordination always ensures that your client device on the 5G network in an enterprise and the radio is always clean. That clean spectrum benefit turns a lot of 
heads around around wireless engineering and say, I actually have an application for that. Um, and sometimes it's simple as network segmentation, right? People think about it um, saying, yep, yeah, it's enough that we put these five different use cases on Wi-Fi. The sixth use case is critical, a little bit more uh, security conscious, and we want to run that on a different spectrum altogether because we just want clean layer one uh, network segmentation. That's another use case to think about these things separately. Um, and some of these are have been highlighted in the market, but um, the more we hear it between different announcements, the more I'm believing that there actually there is more use cases out there than we uh, have imagined. We might be hitting the tip of the iceberg here with what we discovered in the last three years. So I'm looking forward to what we discover in the next five. Well, you weren't first out of the gate um, with with private five G. There's no doubt about that. And so you've had some time to you know get your product out in the field. You've got some great partners. Can you give me? We talk, we've talked theoretically about this vertical and that vertical, but do you have any actual deployments you can you can tell us about? Yeah, absolutely. I would pick. Uh, we publish a couple of case studies on our website um, where we can note customer name, and some of them we cannot because they're private at the yeah, moment. Sure. But we'll want to talk to them about market about the use case. Um, we recently uh, deployed in an outdoor setting at CSU Stanislaus. California State University system, Stanislaus campus. And their use case was simply, hey, look, I want to be able to have a backup wireless network on my own across the campus for whatever needs I have. They do have remote learning needs today. They would like to cover some temporary uh, research facilities around the campus, depending on different departments' needs. But they also wanted to say, look, what if I want to put together 12 video surveillance cameras next year, I'm not going to be able to reserve $60,000 for fiber pool at the time when that need comes. I'll just use a public mobile network, a private LT 5G network as that backhaul instead of spending money on fiber. So it became a facilities, IoT facilities slash remote learning backbone outdoor wireless network for them. Again, this is not using license spectrum. It's using the CBRS spectrum. That's usually the private spectrum option for uh, 5G in the United States. Uh, but that use case is very clean. My student Wi-Fi is reserved for students. Everything else, I would love to save money by cutting the cable with 5G. Everything else that's running on the campus, let's put them on a different spectrum so that the student Wi-Fi is not impacted negatively. And another customer that I cannot... 100% name today, hopefully one day, is a warehousing automation company. We published the story on our website and they are the manufacturer of automated mobile robotics infrastructure. There are the robots, but then there's the infrastructure where the products are located within a cage-like uh, system. This cage sits in the middle of a warehouse and robots are instructed to go and pick products and deliver products outside the cage so the humans can pick the products and put them in trucks and different you know, forklifts, et cetera. So that automation is a 24 seven operation um, in that facility. And the number of those facilities are increasing. Uh, we're essentially the wireless network for the robots and the Wi-Fi is the wireless network for the humans. So that's kind of an interesting use case uh, from a critical infrastructure perspective. Yeah, that's interesting too, because in effect in both cases, you're actually by offloading that from Wi-Fi, you're letting the Wi-Fi perform better. And I think overloaded Wi-Fi is something that we've all faced and we all don't like because it doesn't work properly. And so in a sense, by creating a separate network for these other things, uh, you're actually letting the Wi-Fi work better. Now, uh, one of the interesting things that I thought about the Cisco announcement when I read about it was that it came under the service provider group, which means that it's likely gonna be sold through that channel as a managed service or some sort of subscription-based service where your this is more a traditional enterprise model for the do-it-yourself buyer, uh, correct? Can you talk about those differences? Yeah, absolutely. We've taken the approach of a DIY solution first. So uh, cloud-based system, radios on-premises, your um, uh, mobile core software on-premises that supports those radios and enables them to function as, as a 5G network. Those are all provided by us end-to-end -end system, all ingredients. You can set up your own mobile network, essentially. 
If you are a network engineering team who is used to deploying enterprise networking products, firewalls, SD-WAN systems, Wi-Fi switching, you can just pick our solution and get going. Uh, that's the ease of use that we enabled and made it accessible, as we like to call it. Um, soon after, though, as is the case with our NTT partnership, a lot of the MSPs actually really enjoy that model. They said, hey, look, I can offer my customer a DIY model, but ultimately what I want to be able to do is as these customers scale, we know that they're going to be needing our MSP help. So maybe in two of the sites out of 10, customer wants to use a DIY model, but remaining eight sites, maybe they want to rely on our MSP. So we built a modern system that goes either way. You can start DIY, just like many other enterprise networking technologies have done in the past, but then you can build a layer of MSP managed services um, ser on top. And uh, both models can be supported by installation services, professional services, by our channel partners. And of course, as the product and technology vendor, we're responsible for software, hardware components, warranty, technical support, but our partners can build up a variety of different levels of service on top. So that's the approach that we've taken. And you're, I think you're right. Uh, Cisco's initial release looks like it's gonna be MSP friendly first. Let's see what comes down the road. Uh, but that seems to be the uh, kind of the comparison there. Yeah, and, and from my point of view, I don't think either model is better per se than the other. They're just different. I mean, some customers will want to deploy it themselves. Uh, that's typically what you find in a larger enterprise. And it sounds like some of the use cases you've had, that was the case. And then as you scale, it does move more to a managed service. I think NTT's interest in yours bears that out. Um, and really, it, it makes sense for every 5G operator that sells it on the wide area side to also sell on the private five, you know, uh, private 5G side. In fact, th this is a great opportunity for your partners like an NTT to actually play a more important role with their enterprise customers than they have in the past. I, I think historically, um, you know, let's be honest, telcos have sort of been on the outside looking in when it came to strategic thinking, right? So, yeah. you know, given how important the network is, this is a good opportunity for them. So, exactly. Uh, Exactly. Yeah, I mean, so one thing that I would add is the, going back to the robotics example, you know, the entire journey really starts today with private 5G on a specific application or a solution. You know, if there was no robotics automation, then, you know, you just kind of do what you do and uh, Wi-Fi is good enough and you keep carrying boxes and you have a level of efficiency. Uh, this customer obviously uh, measured and double measured and triple checked the efficiency that they will get with the robotics infrastructure installation, and that's what we're able to realize today, they can move things faster. And then the robotics team thought, hey, look, it would be really good to have a super reliable wireless network for these things that are moving around at high speed and with the minimum amount of disconnects and maybe segmented away from Wi-Fi so that we access the cleaner spectrum. So it's an application-driven deployment, application-driven purchase and rollout. And uh, one of the things that we are religiously um, follow uh, is finding that key use case, key application, and then tying that 5G performance back to an enterprise policy. Enterprise networking teams are usually pretty diligent about how they segment the network, but they also are very diligent about setting quality of service policies. So we kind of build a system that goes application quality of service based on a specific type or device group or both. And that flexibility, we allow them adjust. You know, they can kind of change onboard new devices, onboard new applications as their use cases evolve. And that flexibility, I think, will continue to differentiate us. Uh, we'll love to kind of see what Cisco has to say about that piece of the puzzle in the upcoming days. But that continues to be a pretty big differentiator for us. And uh, we hope to put that to good use, similar to that robotics deployment and other use cases as well. Okay, so, uh, so let's to wrap this up. Let's. Uh, I want you to give a little advice here. If I'm your typical average network manager that's got way too many endpoints to manage, and I've got remote workers coming up, you know, at the Wazoo today, and I'm interested in private five G, how do I get started here? Because it is while it, you guys have set it up to deploy similar to Wi Fi, it's still different. So, what's the yeah. where, where do I start with this? Yeah. So I would first recommend check out Salona.io, I guess, <laughs> shameless plug. Um, the reality is it's a bit of a spectrum uh, mapping. You know, you, there's nothing um, 
wrong with your current Wi-Fi installation. There doesn't have to be. It's just that your application mix in the upcoming years most likely is going to change just like it has been doing for the last 10, 20 years. If you're in IT networking, we usually ask folks to look at, hey, within your use of Wi-Fi, are there applications that you would like to improve the performance of? Are there applications that generate the most trouble tickets for you? People asking, hey, this thing is not perfectly supportable. Um, that might be an opportunity for innovation for 5G. Um, and there are, next to IT networking teams, there are application delivery teams. Those are the folks who usually spend lots of money with AWS and other compute platforms. And they're the ones who are worried about application development and robotics infrastructure. They usually ask the question, hey, is there a network for this thing that I'm building after the fact? <laughs> so my recommendation is think about networking a little bit first because you might have a really good friend in private 5G to get that networking piece solved really quickly. In the past, you have to beg and steal for wired infrastructure and Wi-Fi infrastructure. You don't have to do that anymore. There's another express lane for you to innovate under. And for some organizations, it may not be early enough. Um, maybe you're a conservative organization. Maybe you have an innovation team, CTO team that's kind of thinking about what should be our private 5G strategy. Uh, I would recommend giving them some um, time to figure out, okay, let, let's look at the market players and plan something for the next three years. We're, of course, open to those conversations as well and not just short-term relationships because the journey and discovering what that initial use case is going to look like. Um, but it usually starts with those, the first two audiences I mentioned, the guys who build the network. Uh, let's be honest about what's really working on Wi-Fi great and what may not be super great. And application delivery teams, I think they now have an opportunity to think about networking layer a little bit easier uh, with private 5G. Well, let's see if they do that. My, uh, as a former network engineer, I can tell you that a lot of application delivery teams don't often think about the network until it's too late. So uh, it's a great opportunity to step into it. So. Uh, anyways, those are uh, from Salona, uh, a 5, um, 5G pioneer. Thanks for joining me. Uh, and I do agree with you now that Cisco's in the market, it certainly uh, legitimizes it and uh, it's going to get it exposed to just thousands of customers and thousands of channel partners. And that's obviously a good thing for the industry. So uh, anyways, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for watching. And don't forget to click the subscribe.